Welcome to this Bedley Systems training video on Stat Pro. In this video, we are going to learn how to create a custom response spectra load case for the purpose of dynamic seismic analysis. Let us first look into our load case details. Here I've got a dead load and a live load case, and these have got load items already added within them. I've also created load cases for my dynamic seismic loads in X and Z direction, but these are empty at the moment with no load items within them. We will come back to these load cases in a moment, but first let us discuss mass model related to our dynamic analysis. In a dynamic analysis, the natural frequencies and mode shapes of a structure are the primary parameters that affect the response of a structure to dynamic loading. And these parameters are direct functions of stiffness and mass distribution. For a dynamic load case like a response spectra, its mass model is determined by the program according to one of few methods. Uh, the program can consider loads specified within the dynamic load case itself as mass model, or if a dynamic load case itself does not have loads within it, then all cases defined with the load type of mass can be utilized by the program. For more information on this, please refer to the mass modeling topic from the General Engineering Theory section of StatPro's help. In our example, we will create mass model within our reference load definition. For this, we can manually create a reference load case and add load items within it that represent masses capable of moving in a structure. But we now have an even simpler method in the form of mass model generator. Using this tool, you can easily create seismic mass from the existing primary load cases. This also gives us the option to either create a new reference load or add mass information within the existing dynamic load case. I will click on the option to create a new reference load case. You can also select the loads based on which you want to create the mass model. Um, once I click on the generate button, the mass model is automatically created. And I can see that each load is considered in their absolute value format and along all the possible directions. Let us click on the first seismic load case that we have for the X direction. Um, having this selected, I will click on the add button to add a load item. And from this list of load items, I will select the response spectra. If I click on the code dropdown from this dialog, I can see that there are seismic codes that I can utilize to create my response spectra loading. But if the code that you are looking for is not here, you can select the custom option using which you can specify the spectrum details by yourself. I want to create a response spectra loading according to the Australian Standard for Earthquake Actions, AS 1170 Part 4, which is not in this list, so I will select the Custom option. Next, I can select a combination method. AS 1170 Part 4 allows us to combine the modes with any recognized methods, so I will just leave this to the default option of SRSS. I can also choose to define the spectrum data in terms of either acceleration or displacement. I'm going to use the acceleration type. And having the acceleration type selected here, I can then enter the spectrum pairs in the period versus acceleration table. And for this example, I'll refer to the table of spectral shape factor from AS 1170 part 4 to enter this data for a side subsoil class of shallow soil. I will then enter the product of my probability factor, hazard factor, and ratio of structural performance and ductility factor next to the direction that I want to consider for this load case. In this example, I'm considering a probability factor of 1, assuming an annual probability of exceedance of 1 in 500. I'm also considering a hazard factor of 0 0.08, assuming Sydney as a location and I'm assuming this to be an SMRF steel structure, so I will consider the SP over mu value of 0 0.17. For fetching the spectral value for the actual modes, StatPro gives us the option of two interpolation methods, the linear or the logarithmic method. 
linear interpolation is the default method and I will utilize this default option for our example. It is recommended to use the logarithmic interpolation method if you have only entered a few points in the spectra curve. Many international seismic codes require us to compare the base shear value calculated utilizing a response spectra analysis to the base shear calculated with a static seismic load. If the base shear according to a response spectra analysis is less than 85% of the base shear according to a static analysis, you will need to scale up your response spectra so that you fulfill this requirement. For this purpose, you can come back to the response spectra load item and enter a scale factor if required after the analysis. Such requirements for scaling your response spectra is not mentioned in the Australian standard. I will now close this dialog and then proceed to create a similar custom response spectra for the Z direction. According to AS 1170 part 4, we need to include a sufficient number of modes in our analysis to ensure that at least 90% of the mass of the structure is participating for the direction under consideration. You can let the program know on the number of modes you intend to consider using the cutoff mode shape command. You'll be able to find this command within the miscellaneous commands drop down from the analysis and design tab. I will consider 12 mode shapes for this example. Now I'll move on to the analysis tab. Here I can see the cutoff mode shape command that I've just added as well as the analysis commands that I have already defined for this model. Um, let us look into the analysis commands now. Um, you can see that I've added a perform analysis command to analyze the structure for my dead loads and live loads and another analysis command for the response spectral load cases. This is because this model also has some tension members and I want to inactivate them before analyzing my model under dynamic loading. In a dynamic analysis, the actual force in a member changes sign repeatedly since vibration causes the structure to deflect in opposing directions periodically. So maintaining a tension only behavior is not possible during a dynamic analysis. This is why I'm performing the analysis for my dynamic loads separately after inactivating the tension only members. So what's happening here is I'm first analyzing the structure with all the members activated, including the tension members. This is only going to analyze the dead and live load as this perform analysis command is added before we step into the dynamic loads. Um, then I have a change command in place which instructs the program to utilize only the upcoming uh, loads and commands for the next analysis. Um, I have also inactivated the tension members using the inactive command before analyzing the dynamic loads. So for the second analysis command, the program will inactivate the tension members as well as analyze only the response spectral load cases. I've also included the print option of mode shapes in this second analysis command. So I will get the relative joint motions of each of the modes in my output file. Finally, I want to reactivate all the members at the end of my analysis structure so that I'm able to view the results for all the members. This is again done by adding a change command. Now I will run the analysis. Going into the output file after the analysis is complete, I can navigate to the participation factors section for each response spectral load case. And I can see that enough number of modes have been considered to achieve at least 90% participation for the directions under consideration. In this section, we can also get the base shear values calculated by the program. I can also see that the mode shape print option included in the perform analysis command has produced this mode shapes output. I will now go on to the post processor. From the results tab in the post processor, I can click on um, the mode shape layout and this allows me to graphically view the mode shape of the structure 
and from the drop down list I can select each mode to view its mode shape. This concludes our training video on creating a custom response spectra load case for the purpose of dynamic seismic analysis in StatPro. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.